Welcome to the Stimulus Update series from Daniel's Brew. It's early morning on Sunday, July 19th, 2020. My goal for each update in this series is to provide you a quick and easily digestible segment of the news on the next stimulus check and government stimulus efforts. I post these videos twice a week, so make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future updates that I provide within this series. The Senate returns to work tomorrow from their two-week break, and the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is expected to start discussion on a new second stimulus proposal that he's been working on in consultation with the Trump administration and other Republican leaders in the Senate. In a statement late last week, McConnell told the press that his new proposal is going to focus around the following key topics. Take a listen. I'm not going to put a bill on the floor of the Senate that doesn't have liability protection in it. Now, I'm not talking uh, we have members of the legislature here. I'm not talking about rewriting the tort laws of Kentucky. What we're talking about is a narrowly crafted liability protection related to the coronavirus only, kicking in in December of 2019 and lasting about four years. This would protect hospitals, doctors, nurses, businesses, universities, colleges, K through 12, everyone dealing with the coronavirus who acted in good faith but my view is the next package that we develop ought to be geared toward doing everything we possibly can to make it possible for the kids to be back in school. Because if kids are not back in school, then you got jobs issues for mom and for dad. And so those are some of the highlights that I think we need to address. Uh, stabilize unemployment insurance. We're also going to look at additional direct checks. So there are a variety of different things we're considering, all designed to try to get us through this period as best we can until we get a vaccine. So let's break down what he said, starting with his point about liability protection. Now remember, Trump and the Republican camp are strong proponents of the economy reopening. And as businesses and institutions do so, even if they take all of the precautions that they can, just by the very nature of people coming together and crossing paths, there will be a higher risk of contracting the virus. And so a lot of businesses are actually scared to open because they're fearful that either their workers or their customers might contract the virus and sue them for not providing enough protections against the spread of the infection. And I mean, this makes sense. You can't reopen your business if you're fearful of the possibility of getting sued by everyone that walks through your door. But that does mean that these institutions have to take every single measure available to help protect their staff and their patrons against the spread of the virus. And to help with that, Congressman Tom Rice introduced a bill late last week called the Healthy Workplace Tax Credit that would give businesses a refundable tax credit of up to 50% of the cost spent on COVID-19 testing, personal protection equipment, disinfecting, and reconfiguring workplaces to help mitigate the spread of the virus. One stipulation, however, is that this would be a credit on payroll taxes, and it would be limited to $1,000 per employee for the business's first 500 employees, $750 per employee for the next 500 employees, and $500 for each employee thereafter. So basically, what it means is that if you only have like three employees in your store, you can't just spend a really high amount like $200,000 and expect to get half of that back in tax credits. You should be spending this money in proportion to the size of your employee base. Now it's still only a bill and it's not yet passed into law, but if it does get approved, then this combined with the potential liability protections from the next bill should help to make the workplace a safer environment, which would hopefully protect more people and prevent COVID-19 lawsuits from coming in. Now Mitch McConnell has also mentioned stabilizing unemployment insurance and additional direct checks to the American people, which aligns with the overall direction that the Republicans are going as I reported in my last update. So if you'd like to catch up on that news, make sure you check out my previous stimulus video here. Also last week, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi mentioned a couple of key points to highlight the Democratic stance on her next stimulus bill. First, on the topic of having a $40,000 income limit on the next stimulus check, Pelosi signaled that she's not in favor of this by saying, I think there are many families, depending on the size of the family, so many different things that the $40,000 would have to be explained and justified. But I think families making over $40,000 probably need assistance. Again, just depending on the family situation. Now, just to provide some context, Mitch McConnell is the one that introduced this idea of an income cap. And if this is what Congress decides on in the next couple of weeks, then over 20 million Americans would not get a stimulus check the second time around. This would pretty much exclude a good portion of the middle class of this country. And most economists are saying that this would end up hurting the overall recovery of the country as middle class citizens have a strong likelihood of spending that money to stimulate the economy. Now, one other thing that Nancy Pelosi stated last week was that she'd be willing 
willing to be flexible on the topic of continuing the unemployment boost if we got a sufficient second stimulus check amount to the American people. If you remember, at the end of this month, the extra $600 of unemployment boost that's on top of your regular unemployment checks is set to expire. And Pelosi and the other Democrats are in favor of continuing the extra boost until next January 2021, as outlined in the HEROES Act. But in the interest of getting to a quick agreement on the next stimulus package, Pelosi is saying that her camp is willing to compromise on the size of the renewed expanded unemployment benefits, stating, That pillar is about putting money into the pockets of American people. One piece of it is the unemployment insurance and the benefit you're talking about, and another part is how we put direct payments into the families. So we'll see what the entire package looks like. So basically, if we get a larger stimulus check, she'd be willing to give up on some of the unemployment boost, but if the second stimulus check is small, then she'd be fighting for us to get more unemployment insurance. So we'll see what happens this week and how things pan out with the discussions and the debates in Congress about the next stimulus bill. But one thing is for sure, both sides of Congress need to work extremely fast if they really want to hit that end of July timing for passing this new bill. If you look at the in-session dates for both the House and the Senate, you'll notice that the Senate has been off for the last couple of weeks, both the Senate and the House work from July 20th to July 31st, and then the House starts to take their next break on the first week of August, followed by the Senate on the second week of August. And then after that, both sides of Congress don't come back into session until September 8th. That means we literally have only 10 business days before both the House and the Senate are out of office again. And in that time, we need to hear what Mitch McConnell's new proposal looks like, then we need to get that in front of the House of Representatives so that they can read, review, and revise the bill, because I'm sure they're not going to accept it just 100% as it is. And then we need the Senate to review those House edits to the bill and have both parties come together to an agreement. And then only after that will it go up to the president for his signature before the bill passes into law. All of that within the next 10 business days. Now, one piece of good news is that Nancy Pelosi already stated that if it comes down to it, she's more than willing to delay the summer break at the beginning of August that the House of Representatives is scheduled for to make sure that the bill gets done on time. But we haven't yet heard that from Mitch McConnell and the Senate side of the Congress. So even if it does happen, that really only buys us only five more business days until the Senate goes out on break again. Let me know what you guys think about this, about this timing. Do you think Congress can get it done in 10 or maybe even 15 business days? Do you think the Senate should just come out and also make the same statement about delaying or canceling their break until the next bill is hammered out? Do you think they would? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. So that's it for today's stimulus update from Daniel's Brew. And as I mentioned, the Senate is returning to the office tomorrow. So my guess is starting tomorrow afternoon, we're going to start to hear a lot of new developments and information coming out of Congress. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I bring you the latest news this week on our next stimulus bill. Also, if you found this information helpful, please hit that like button so that we can share this information with more viewers like you. Thanks again for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.